Welcome to the Hot Pixels tutorial on Fast Stone Image Viewer. First up, I hope you have already downloaded this cool piece of freeware. It's called Fast Stone Image Viewer. You can open up a web browser and Google it and install it on your PC. Sorry if you've got a Mac. Once you've installed this program, open it up. Like with most other software, if you go to the top left, you'll find the file menu under which are subcategories like Open, Save As, and Print. On the left here is a file directory tree, and we're looking here for a photo that we can fix up. Double click on the photo, and it should open up in Fast Stone. This is a photo of my wife descending a staircase. What I like about this program is that it's very empty and clean, free from distractions and clutter. Nice. When you point your mouse to the left, a pop-up menu appears with all the useful tools that you need. When you point your mouse to the bottom of the screen, a navigator menu appears with common functions like open, print, and zoom in. When you point your mouse to the right-hand side of the screen, a file and attributes menu pops up. It's got metadata, which shows you the camera settings from when I took the photo, and there's a histogram, which is pretty advanced. The following tips are the basic sort of fixes that you can do on most photographs. First up, I would like to straighten this image. See, at the top, the balcony looks a bit skewed, a bit skewiff, and the staircase isn't exactly straight either. So if we point our mouse to the left of the screen and look for rotate, here it is, we can rotate the image 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right, or even do a full horizontal flip. That's cool. So hit straighten. A preview menu opens up with a useful grid that we can line everything up with. Now be warned, if you rotate an image too much, you risk losing important elements in the scene, which get cut off when you crop it. So over on the right hand side is a little field. I'm going to type in 0 0.6 degrees. That's sufficient to rotate the image. So it's horizontals are horizontal and the verticals are vertical. There's also a full screen preview here, which I'll try. Wait for the progress bar. Voila, almost done. Not quite perfect but that's good enough for now. So we hit OK. Another progress bar. Hey presto. Now the second thing I'd like to do is crop this photo into a square shape. This should give me a more pleasing composition. So we return to the menu on the left and look for crop board. We click on this and get a pop-up menu now we can change the original ratio pictured here that the photo was taken with and choose something else like 6 by 4 inch print or perhaps a DVD movie size or 16 to 9 TV ratio. But all I really want to do is select 1 to 1 so I can get my square. Now if you grab the nodes on the corner nodes and the side nodes, we can just reduce that size a bit. Get rid of the balcony ceiling and the frame on the left. Yeah, perfect. That's what I want. We click OK. The third thing I would like to do is correct the exposure. If we point our mouse to the right hand side of the screen and pull up the histogram menu, it tells us that the image is quite flat. That is, on the right hand side there's not much pixel data or the far left. There's no real highlights or shadows. All the data is in the middle. This calls for a big boost in contrast. So we return to our pop-up magic menu, look for the color submenu and hit adjust colors. Voila! Now that's pretty good. If you don't like what you do, however, you can go to the bottom and hit undo, or redo, undo. Well, that did what I wanted it to do, but it's not always the case. If you need to take more control, go and hit adjust curves. You can see a before and after screen there. 
and on the right is another histogram. That's the curve palette. This is a powerful feature found in both Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Now let's have a play. Move your mouse to the right hand node, pull it left a bit, it brightens the whole picture up. Conversely, hit the node at the bottom left, drag that along, and it darkens the shadows. So we click here and, and create a new node. We drag it up above the line a bit. This brightens the highlights. Don't overdo it. And we click down here and pull it down below the line, creating a subtle S curve. And this darkens the shadows a bit. But we don't want the shadows to be solid black. Yep, that's quite a good S curve. If we hit the button below, we can see the original image and compare it to what we're doing. I think I will add a little bit more punch in the bottom end. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. Let's hit OK. Now this next stage is optional. We can do some color correction by going to the left hand menu and hitting adjust colors. We have a before image preview on the left and on the right we have an after image preview. At the bottom we can adjust the brightness, the contrast and gamma. And over on the right we can seriously change the hue. Now she's wearing a bright green top. But I don't really want to change the colors in this instance. The next thing we want to do is sharpen the image. So down in the navigation menu, we can zoom in with a magnifying glass or go straight to 100%. By the way, you should always preview your images at 100% to check for sharpness. Actually, all digital photos need some sharpening. So we return to our magic menu on the left. We select the sharpen blur tool, use the grabber hand, to suit, frame our head. Now if we push the amount slider to the far right, see here I've introduced a lot of ugly digital noise. Yuck, not good. I suggest a maximum amount of 50%, occasionally 100%. But always leave the ratio slider at 1.0. Now, there are just a few things in this photo that I find quite annoying, e.g. this blue sticker on the door. Let's get rid of it. I'll show you how to use the Clone and Heal tool. We find them on the left-hand menu, and we have to navigate using the scroll bars. Where's that sticker? There it is. Right, cloning is very powerful and not that hard to do once you know how. Sorry if you've got a Mac, but on a Windows-based PC, you hold down the control key on the keyboard while simultaneously clicking the left mouse button. This selects an area, like the glass on this window, that's nice and smooth. Secondly, you let go of everything, move the mouse over the target area, and left click again. In this way, you can paint out the offending feature like so. Hey, there's a bit of old flaky paint up here somewhere. There it is. Right, I'd like to clone this out. So again, we hold the control key down and left click the mouse. We release that, position the cursor over the flaky paint and click again. Gotcha. And down here are a couple of bolts that are quite distracting. I think we'll use the heel tool this time. It operates in just the same way. Again, hold the control key on the keyboard while you left click the mouse. Let go, put the cursor over the offending feature and left click the mouse again and paint out the offending bit. Done. We click OK. I'm happy with that. Right, now the last thing I need to do is reduce the size of the image for emailing. 
many email service providers restrict the size of an email to about four megabytes. So we're going to reduce the size of this photo to an acceptable resolution for showing on a PowerPoint or uploading to a web image gallery. So we return to our pop-up palette on the left-hand side of the screen and select Rotation slash Resize. We have a pop-up menu here where we can change the pixel size, the percent size or the print size. I'll just change the pixel size and in the field type in a value of one and a half thousand pixels square. Great, we OK that and we're ready to go. Finally, the very last thing we need to do is go down to the bottom navigator menu and click the floppy disk icon, which is a bit of a blast from the past, an anachronism if you like. And this will save as the file to the computer without overwriting the original photograph. Well, there we have it. Our tutorial is now over. I'd like you to download the software, find a photo that you want to fix up, spend a decent amount of time learning how to use these powerful tools, and you won't regret it. I guarantee your photos will improve. But remember to have fun. See you around. For more helpful tips, download your free ebook. Click to the right of the screen. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate it. It's time to get out of here.